Hello my friends, my name is Artur Rey and I am an Estonian YouTuber. In the last video we were introduced to B2, the most stealth bomber in the world, the most expensive plane in the world. The cost of one plane is supposed to be 2 billion dollars, which is insane, incredibly, it's out of this world expensive, but the US can allow it to themselves to have these crazy projects. It's not the only stealth wonder weapon that America has. You guys said, watch Zumwalt. Well, what is Zumwalt? Is it some German Wunderwaffen? Well, no, it's not German, it's very American. It is supposed to be the most advanced warship in the world, stealth and very expensive. So today we are going to find out what it is, only America has it, and how much does it cost? Before we start, as usual, we take this time for the Patreons. Thank you Patreons, all of you who support the channel. You make it happen, thanks to you we will find out about Zumwalt. Thank you so much. Three new names. We have Mr. Charles Guai. How do I say your last name? Thank you. JD. Hey JD, appreciate it. We have Mr. Derek Kruger. A German, you will meet Zumwalt today. Two Germans meeting, right? Although one of them is very American. Grab your Estonian YouTuber cup and let's jump into this ship. The largest destroyer in the world with the highest cost. The ship that applied the best technological solutions and faced many problems. The brainchild of an ambitious military program on the verge of collapse. Today we meet the ships that may become the beginning of a new era in the naval history or one of the most expensive failures in the history of shipbuilding. How do you be successful? You make mistakes, right? You fail. Who can make the biggest failures in the world? The US, because they have so much money, so they will be the most successful, because they can pay for their mistakes and learn from them. Some other countries will take, make those mistakes, and it's so painful for them, so expensive, they will never pick up the project again. But no, not the US. They will invent expensive, stupid things, and if they don't work, they will invent better things, which will work. So they can allow it to themselves to make these failures. I'm not saying this is a failure, but it has happened before. The Zumwalt class is a representative of a new generation of guided missile destroyers, incorporating both the best solutions... Guided missile destroyers? What is, what is a guided missile destroyer? Already usual in the Navy and completely new ones. This made them the most advanced, complex and expensive destroyers in the world. The history of these new ships originates from several big questions that were bothering the US military since the late 1980s. The first question was the need to increase the efficiency and survivability of warships in the event of a large-scale battle. The Cold War wasn't over yet. The concept involved the creation of rather large vessels, with effective protection and high automation. That's the laser weapon, As right? We watched a video about it, the laser weapon. I watched a video about railgun and laser weapon. Both of them were used large scale on ships, very deadly. The railgun could shoot through anything it shot. The fastest bullet in the world shot by a railgun. And the laser weapon was, it was capable of destroying small boats just ex exploding them into pieces using just light. It's pretty cool. That's the future tech of America. But that's the tech we know about. Imagine about the tech we don't know. Crazy. As armament, it was supposed to use both missiles and standard weapons, as well as lasers and magnetic guns. The complete yeah, magnetic. set. The concept was quite popular, but lost relevance in the 1990s. After the end of the Cold War, the need for such ships disappeared. The work continued, but more like in a purely scientific format. All of these ex crazy stealth super weapons, um, it's, there's no need for it. There's no need for a crazy stealth bomber that costs over 2 billion. There's no need for a stealth ship, because you don't have an enemy to fight. I mean, US doesn't have a foreign contest. It doesn't have a contest, really. No country can get against it, so you don't really need... These, these weapons are OP, if you know what I mean, using gamers' terms here. You can't get against them. There's no competitors against these. You don't even need to create them, but they do still exist. I guess they play their part, if not in battle, then in um, propaganda. We have these weapons, don't mess with us. That's the message it sends out. The second question attracted widespread attention as early as the 1990s. This was the time of resignation of the main naval legends of the 20th century, battleships. The debate on the battleship retirement raised a problem that, at first glance, was not important. There was no replacement for their guns in the fleet. 
For some people, that wasn't a concern. Missiles and naval aviation could handle this job well. But others countered that aviation and missiles are often too expensive and are not able to completely replace naval artillery. In the late 90s, a number of projects on these topics were put together in a program called DD-21. It envisioned the creation of a new generation of large destroyers, which would combine both the effectiveness of the original concept of future ships and the introduction of the newest long-range guns and other solutions that would allow them to replace battleships. Such goal-setting, by the way, became one of the nuances of obtaining the index of these destroyers. While the names of Arleigh Burke-class destroyers begin with the DDG-51 and now reach the declared DDG-138, the new generation ships will continue the tradition of mainly the Spruance-class destroyers, the last of which carried the index DDG-997. The lead ship of the new generation will receive the DDG-1000 index, continuing the tradition and sounding spectacular. In the years 2000-2001, the project received official approval, and at the same time it was announced that the lead ship of the new generation will be named in honor of Admiral Elmo Zumwalt. Oh, Admiral Zumwalt. Understood. It's not a German name, it's Admiral Zumwalt, of course. Very respected dude if you have a ship class named after you. So, Mr. Zumwalt, you done good for yourself and for the US military. Initially, the Navy was supposed to receive 32 ships of this type, but it quickly became clear that the project, which implies the introduction of a huge number of innovations, does not fit into the budget. And this 32 ships, I mean, the US is very ambitious. 2,300 F-35s to be bought in five years, one of them costs over 100 million. And then 32 of these new ships that have a totally new, everything new about it. Very ambitious, but sounds like it's not gonna happen, truly. And the 2,300 F-35s are also, I don't think they're gonna happen, it's too much. Maybe just a little bit less, but not that much. Figure had to be reduced to 24 and then to 7. Meanwhile, the disputes over the budget continued. With ever-increasing complexity and cost, Congress ultimately provided funding for the construction of just three ships as technology demonstrators. The rest of the budget went to purchase a batch of Arleigh Burke destroyers. They were already... Only three ships to demonstrate the technology. Well, here we have the technology. Let's see if it was worth it at all. ...available and proved to be quite good. Naturally, a sharp reduction in production plan led to an equally sharp increase in the cost of each ship, produced not in a series, but one by one. It was assumed that the lead DDG-1000 would cost three and a half billion dollars, a huge figure for a destroyer. The calculation of the top- Three and a half billion for one ship, two billion for one bomber, how can you allow it to yourself? I ask this question from you all the time, and you guys say you can't allow it to, themself, you, to yourself because you're in debt. But uh, apparently you can, because if you're the strongest country in the world, it doesn't really matter that you own mo owe money to somebody because you have the big guns, right? Total budget showed that the cost of the entire program, including research, development and construction of ships, will exceed 20 billion. General Dynamics was chosen as the main subcontractor, and in addition to them, other large companies participated in the program. Northrop Grumman, Raytheon, BAE Systems, Lockheed Martin, and so on. Finally, in 2011, the keel of the DDG-1000 Zumwalt was laid at the General Dynamics Beth Iron Works shipyard in Maine. The keel of the second ship, DDG-1001 Michael Mansour, was laid in 2013, and the assembly of the DDG-1002 Linden Beach. Look how many people are watching this. Uh, yeah, it actually makes sense. I know they, the first time they actually float the ships and put them out on the ocean. It's a big thing to watch. It's the first time they go in water. And look at these people, yeah. It's the opening ceremony of the world's most expensive and invisible naval ship. Welcome to the 3.5 billion dollar ship. You can't see it, you can't touch it, don't go inside. Here it is. Lovely. What is the right way to watch my videos? Here it is, the Estonian YouTuber cup. You can put tea in it, I put green tea every video. You can put coffee in it, whiskey or rum if you're crazy. Or if you want to go full out haywire, you can put vodka in it. We have a cup pick of the week. Look at this girl, I mean look! Yeah, that's really cool, that's Julia. She got my cup, Julia, way to go! You got the cup, you can send me a cool pick. Be like Julia, get the cup, make a photo, send it to me, and you'll be recorded in history. Thank you, Julia, for getting the cup. 
which state will be the state of the day today. We will learn a new fact about that state. Let's go. First of all, we have Donald Smith from Lebanon. Lebanon? That's a country in Africa. No, not that Lebanon. Lebanon, Ohio. We have a Stefan Ramondetta. Ramondetta, you're Italian, right? Very Italian name. We do have these Italian names here, but no orders from Italy, so all from the US. Stefan, you're from East Hartford, Connecticut. We have Nikki Armstrong. Nikki, two Ks, it could be a Finnish name, Nikki, but Armstrong is very American. Nikki, you are from Renton. Washington. We haven't had any orders from Washington for a long time. At the beginning, Washington was in the lead, but now it has declined. But yes, let's kick start the Washington state again. We have Jeffrey Severance. Where's my severance payment, Mr. Severance? Jeffrey, you're from Garden Valley, Idaho. Now we have Dennis Royce. Long lost great great grandson of Rolls Royce. Dennis, you're from Post Falls, Idaho. Again. And you're not basic. No, you're super special. You know why? Because you didn't get one cup. You got two cups for Idaho. That means Idaho have gotten already three orders in this video. You know what that makes Idaho? State of the day. We'll find out one very interesting unknown fact about Idaho. Let me put the points. State of the day fact about Idaho is Idaho's state seal is the only seal in the US designed by a woman. Ain't that cool? That's the, in the end of the 1800s, so it's over a hundred years ago. Still designed by a woman. Back then it was a huge deal, so way to go Idaho. Gender neutrality coming your way. Let's add the green state of the day line under Idaho. My friends, carry on as you have been. You're doing amazing. Back to the video. Johnson began in 2017. By 2019, all three ships are already sailing, although still taking on the thorny path of testing. So, what did the fleet get for its rather big investment? Some world-class ships have a length of 610 feet or 190 meters and a displacement of almost 16,000 tons. In those indicators, it significantly exceeds Arleigh Burke, the displacement of which reaches 9,800 tons, and automatically becomes the heaviest of this type of ships made in the United States. Among the analogs worldwide, it is second only to the Russian Orlan or Kirov class nuclear flagships. The first thing that catches the eye is, of course, the rather exotic appearance of the ship that immediately yeah. says, It looks like Cybertruck, doesn't it? From Tesla. It's the same design. Sharp corners and smooth smooth surfaces, the same painting, kind of looks like the Cybertruck. Make it electric and it's a Cybertruck. It is stealth. I have to note that reducing radar visibility is already quite a normal practice in the new warship design, but in the Zumwalt program this task was one of the main ones. A faceted shape with a minimum number of parts. Most of the equipment is hidden inside the structure, and the surface itself has special radar absorbing coatings. The same goal was pursued in the design of the power plant. Its core is a pair of Rolls-Royce MT30 gas turbine generators with a power of 35.4 megawatts each. They generate electricity for all the ship's systems. This is one of the special features. The ship is almost completely electric, including engines. The it is electric. I'm telling you, this is the Cybertruck of water. This is the Cybertruck of ships. Electric. Uh, Rolls-Royce makes the motors, that's really cool. The engines, I mean, about the B2, it didn't look like much. It also looks like the Cybertruck a little bit. It's not about the appearance that makes it invisible to radars, it's the material they put on it. And he, this one has uh, anti-radar coating or something, it absorbs signals. It is invisible, not to the naked eye, but to the radars. And also I've heard that one B2 has been shot down. The invisible, most expensive bomber in the world has been shot down. One happened in the 90s. And it wasn't seen by radar, it was seen by a naked eye and then shot down. Use of this kind of power plant introduces certain technical risks and leads to the rise of the project cost. But on the other hand, this solution makes it more compact and what is also important, quiet. 
Along with additional vibration absorbing elements and new cooling systems, it reduces the ship's infrared signature, and by noise, it is at the level of modern submarines. The ship doesn't become invisible, of course, but in disguise, it achieved serious results. Despite the fact that Zumwalt class ships themselves are very large, their radar cross section, or roughly speaking, their visibility on radars, does not exceed that of a small civilian vessel, yacht, or a fishing boat, whereas classic destroyers glow like Christmas trees. Oh, yeah, th that is good actually. To make this kind of ship invisible totally would take a miracle. But if you have a, oh, there's a civilian ship coming in and boom, suddenly you have the most expensive destroyer in the world next to you. That's a surprise Russia and China are going to have in the future. This sometimes becomes a problem. When performing standard voyages, the ship has to be equipped with special reflectors so that it becomes visible again. It would be a shame to find out that the most expensive destroyer in the Navy almost sank because due to its disguise, someone crashed into it. It is crazy, I've heard this about the ships. You have this vast ocean, right? Huge body of water, many ships, a lot of room, but ships do collide. There's nothing around, but they do collide. How is this possible? I've heard there's this thing, they... Since uh, in water there's not much friction between you and the land, everything has gravitation, and ships are quite big, and in water that force actually works quite along. If you, two ships, huge destroyers, are going on the same path next to each other, they will slowly lean towards each other because the gravity between them pulls them together because they're so big and the water doesn't work against it. It truly happens. Nothing around it, huge body of water and ships still collide. It happens. It's, it's mind-blowing. It's mind-blowing. It's the same thing that you have a desert, only one tree, nothing more around it, and the one guy is driving a car and it, boom, it still goes into that one tree. Things like that happen. The widespread of stealth technology is not only controversial in terms of traffic. It's not a submarine. Is there even a point in making the ship of this size invisible on radars, if it potentially will be used in coastal areas with active sea traffic when it will be observed visually? In addition, all the excellent solutions to ensure stealth lose all meaning at the moment it opens fire. This means that its survivability will be at maximum while sailing, but on direct participation in military operations, it will not have significant advantages over its classic colleagues. The ship is capable of accelerating to a speed of 30 knots, and its total energy capacity significantly exceeds this indicator on similar vessels. This is done mainly for the future, to power new types of weapons, laser and magnetic, that may be installed later. In terms of appearance and controllability, many people can have the idea that a ship with such a huge tumble home suffers from instability and on a sharp turn may even roll over. The Zumwalt class has many problems, but instability is not one of them. During the sea trials they showed themselves pretty good. And looking back, we can point out much more extreme designs. Starting with Japanese battleships with huge towers on decks, and ending, for example, with the USS Long Beach cruiser, with its frightening appearance, which did not stop it from serving at sea for decades without any problems. Of course, given the requirements to provide artillery support for coastal forces, the ship had to get new guns. Replacing the giant main calibers that the battleships were so proud of was not an easy task. Initially, as part of the DD-21 project, it was planned to create the VGAS system, vertical gun for advanced ships, with a vertically located barrel. That's the railgun, vertical gun. It shoots um, with magnetic force, not with explosives. By using electricity and magnets, it shoots a pellet that can, it is, it's made out of very strong metal or even depleted uranium, and that can go through it can go through anything, through many feet of metal, so if you shoot that at a ship's engine, it's this, the bullet is this wide, it can take out the engine, it would just boom, go straight through it. You cannot achieve that speed with explosives and gunpowder, you need magnetic railguns for that. Very expensive, but with this small bullet you can take out whole machines. But such a design was too complicated, and the engineers had to return to the more classic 155mm turret gun design. But not without innovations. It fires specially designed long-range land attack projectiles, or the LR LAP. These are in fact guided missiles, fired by a gun and supported in flight by jet thrust. Given that each ship is equipped with two of those guns, it's safe to say that Zumwalt has surpassed its mighty ancestors.
Wait, you, you, you have a mortar basically firing mortar rounds that have rocket fuel in them, they're flying on their own and they're guided. So you're giving them a huge head start, a kick start, it goes real fast, then flies and it's guided also. It's not this unintelligent blind mortar shell anymore that just f falls where it wants to. This one is a precision weapon but a huge caliber. But it's not a missile. But the problem again was in the money. The cost of LR Lab reaches million dollars a piece, so only these three destroyers were equipped with them. The manufacturers are trying to create something more acceptable based on the LR Lab technology. Their work is underway. It is assumed that the future ships will be equipped with electromagnetic guns. And we can't That's forget the about the little things. The main caliber is good for artillery strikes, but for protection from small ships and boat attacks, Zumwalt received a 30mm MK46 gun. Of course new tasks do not cancel the old ones. Zumwalt, like its predecessors, is equipped with a set of vertical missile launch systems. However, unlike the analogs, these weapons are not assembled in a special zone on the ship, but distributed along its sides, which reduces the risk of explosion of ammunition in the event of an attack. And even if it... Yeah, I watched a video about, uh, about the Battle of Midway, where Japanese carriers, plane carriers, aircraft carriers, lost their advantage, lost all of their aircraft because they were packed on deck and when the Americans attacked all of them exploded, the fuel tanks of the planes, small planes exploded on the decks of the carriers igniting them all, all three of them on fire. If they would be in the air the carriers would have not ignited because one or two bombs don't do anything to the carrier but the explosion of 50 aircraft, that's, that's a different story. So here when they mounted them in the ship, not on the ship, the missiles I mean that means if somebody attacks the ship, the missiles are not going to explode on the ship. Makes it much more durable in battles. Thus, the damage will be reduced. The idea potentially increases survivability of the ship, but again, complicates the design and reduces the armament. While Arleigh Burke carries up to 96 missiles, the seemingly larger Zumwalt only 80. The ship may contain additional transport, marine and aerial. The aft deck has a large landing area with a hangar that can accommodate two helicopters. At the bottom there is an internal dock for accommodation of boats. The rest of the filling is also almost at the highest level. Initially it was assumed that Zumwalt will be equipped with several active electronically scanned array radar stations, operating in different wavelength ranges in parallel. But later it was decided that radars so powerful and complex were just too much, and to save money they were simplified. However, this option is still considered the most advanced and is planned for installation on other new warships. To complete the task of underwater observation, the ship was equipped with a complex of sonars, capable of effectively tracking mines, submarines and everything that comes with them. In order to fight them, the ship is equipped with anti-submarine missiles and helicopters. There are no torpedo tubes. Zumwalt is almost a robot. Most of the weapons, onboard systems and elements of the power plant are controlled by computers with minimal human involvement. As oh really? This is where we're moving at now. I, I'm i waiting for the time for exoskeletons that marines are gonna use, something like that. The Edge of Tomorrow is the movie, I'm waiting for that to happen. It will, I mean this ship is a robot already and it looks like a cyber truck, it is electric. Put some solar panels on it and it doesn't need any external force at all. <laughs> I'm joking of course, but still it is very cool to know that all of this is done by algorithms now and if a missile comes in, if a torpedo comes in, it detects it faster than humans can and it shoots it down or breaks it or warns people at least. Human error happens a lot. You can do a lot by installing these algorithms that can scan the road or in this case scan the enemy, enemy hostiles or scan incoming projectiles for you and let you know if they're coming. And if you don't act fast enough, they will act for you. In this case, they will shoot down the missile or destroy, destroy the torpedo for you. You, don't, you couldn't even react. There was a torpedo, there's no more torpedo, and you couldn't do anything. The ship did it for you. As a result, this is a huge empty ship. Its entire crew is 130, 150 people. For example, twice as many people surf on smaller Arleigh Burke destroyers. <clears throat> This number of innovations, including the introduction of technologies created from scratch, could not come without problems. And there is a lot of them in all directions, from software to generators. The main problem, of course, was the monstrous cost. 
According to general data, the Zumwalt program cost the budget $22.5 billion, and the construction of each ship, not counting R&D, cost about $4 billion, and these figures are not final at all. The main reason for the success in the initial budget is probably the excessive ambition of its executors. The military and the industry tried to introduce everything in one ship. The ship's functions are significantly revised compared to those on conventional destroyers, which increased the risks. In addition, a huge number of completely new technologies, which required large-scale research at the beginning and now cause problems due to shortcomings, have increased the risks even more. At the same time, all okay, they tried to fit everything new into this one ship. Although what they could have done was just introduce small pieces of a technology piece at the time, but they just put everything together into that one ship. I feel like they did the same with the B-2 bomber and the F-35. Too much in one place. I mean, the U.S. is ambitious, but you can or even you can go overboard. You can because the money is not endless. It does run out at some point. All these features, although they make the Zumwalt destroyers the most advanced, don't really give any undeniable advantages over the existing ships, which perform their tasks quite well and cost a lot less. As a result, instead of a serious fleet group, the Navy received only three vessels that still need to be brought to real combat readiness, and the military are forced to continue purchasing and modernization of old ships and to develop new projects. Can Zumwalt, in this case, be considered a colossal failure? Well, if you look at them as just new destroyers, then yes, spending $22 billion on three ships is crazy. They could build a fleet of simpler ships instead. Oh. But if you look at everything as a research program with three prototypes, it will still be an inadequately expensive program. But it must be taken into account that the number of technologies created for it is huge, and the ships are now acting as labs, working out promising solutions that would otherwise be very difficult to implement. Researching is crazy expensive, it takes a lot of time and money, and if you can't allow these failures for you as a country, you cannot be the top of the world, you cannot have the most advanced military systems, you cannot be the US. And you guys have the money for it, your government does. And that's why you have the new technologies, because you have made, I mean, the US government has made these mistakes, paid for them, learned from them, and created this new project that is better and cheaper. But it, it takes failures and money to reach that point, which, for example, Russia, Russia and China cannot do. They don't have the potential for it. But yes, you cannot create a perfect new ship or bomber without failing first, so it's normal for this to happen, although I know it makes American people quite mad if you get three ships for 22 billion dollars, although you could fix the school system for that money. Zumwalt was born in agony, devouring time, effort and money, and it never became the next generation of future warships. But the created potential is huge, and in one form or another, will definitely be implemented on other projects, one of which finally will become the new generation that everyone has been waiting for a long time. Meanwhile, the story of this epic trinity continues. Very interesting to th see this. I like seeing these future weapons. The B2 is old, it's not that new anymore, but still the tech is not being repeated by any country in the world. It is done in the 90s, and still it's the newest, the most deadly and most expensive plane in the world. This ship also, it is a few years old now, but still it's the newest thing. It might fail, but I think it gives a lot of ideas and technology to the next class. This won't be the class that US is gonna produce the whole fleet of. It's too expensive. I think they're gonna think about something new and take the technology and successes of this ship and leave out the failures and you get the new class, the most expensive fleet, then the most futuristic technologies that can beat any navy. So I don't think it's a failure. It might look like it, but in 10 years time I think it's a good stepping stone for the next class. If you want to support the channel, the Patreon link is in the description below. Also, go and get the Stone YouTuber Cup. I have a su surprise coming out for you, you will find out in a few weeks, maybe one to two weeks. It's a big one, so get ready. But as always, until my next video, stay cool and bye bye.